Welcome back. Today we're going to focus in on section 3.5, which is limits to infinity. Limits to infinity are going to be talking about what happens as x increases or decreases without bound. So what happens as x gets larger and larger and larger, or going to positive infinity, or what's happening as x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, or to negative infinity. And what this allows, will allow us to do is to define horizontal asymptotes. If we find that as x goes to infinity of f of x equals some value, we're going to call this L, or if the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x equals some L, again, these don't have to be the same value, but they could be, um, but if we find that they go to some value, then that's going to define a horizontal asymptotes asymptote. So we've defined vertical asymptotes where we get infinity being um, the value as, after we've taken the limit. Now if we take the limit going to infinity, it's going to give us our horizontal asymptotes. So we've got quite a few examples to run through today. A lot of things can happen with these. Uh, first thing I want to look at is, well, what happens as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger? And what you have to think of is as infinity being a concept or an idea. It's not necessarily a number. We can't just plug in infinity into a, an equation and get something out. It just doesn't work that way, um, like our other values were. So our first rule of limits that I give you, plug and chug, doesn't necessarily work in this, I in this idea of infinity. So we have to think what happens with our function as x grows uh, larger and larger and larger, or smaller and smaller and smaller. So let's go ahead and jump into example one here. Here we have the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x plus 1. So what's happening here? Well, as x gets larger and larger and larger, what happens to 2 times x? Well, that's going to get larger and larger and larger as well. And that plus 1 is going to increase it by 1. As we get bigger and bigger and bigger numbers, this plus one becomes very irrelevant because if we add one to a million, it's pretty close to a million. And if we go into a hundred billion and I add one to it, that difference in between those values is very, very small and minute. So that plus one really isn't going to affect a whole lot of this equation. Nonetheless, if we take 2 and we multiply it by a larger and larger and larger number, that gets larger. Adding 1 gets larger and larger and larger as well. So we say the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x plus 1 equals infinity. Hopefully, if we think about the graph of 2x plus 1, it looks something like this. We know, or we can see now, as x gets larger and larger and larger, the y values are getting larger and larger and larger as well. So that's why this is kind of going off into infinity as the y values. In example two here, we're looking at is x going to negative infinity of negative 2x squared plus 3x minus 4. Well, here we're taking x squared. So we're taking a number that's smaller and smaller and smaller and squaring it. That number is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. But if we square it, then that's going to get larger. So this x squared is actually going to a positive infinity. But if I take negative 2 and multiply that by, by a positive uh, larger number, we actually end up with a smaller number. When I talk about a smaller number, we're talking about a, a more negative, if you wish, number. So our smaller numbers are out here. Our larger numbers are out here. So as x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, this negative 2x squared is actually getting smaller and smaller and smaller as well. So it's ending up down in here somewhere. 3x, if I multiply 3 by a negative infinity, so 3 negative infinities, that's still going to be a negative infinity. So I have a negative infinity plus a negative infinity, so that gives me you know, a very negative infinity, if you wish, and then minus 4, so I'm subtracting even more off of that. So we're going to see as x goes to negative infinity, this function is going to go to negative infinity as well. Remembering 
uh, with both example one and two, when we have an infinity or a negative infinity, we're also going to put in the does not exist value. But we are interested in knowing which of these it is. Is it a positive infinity or a negative infinity? So I want to see both of that notation. In example three, we're going to start in our rational equations or functions. Uh, we have the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x. So here, as x gets larger and larger and larger, well, what happens to 1 divided by a larger and larger and larger number? Well, if you don't know or you can't think too much about that, plug in some numbers. Uh, if I plug in 10, as x is 10, we get 1 tenth. If x were 100, that gets larger and larger, so we'd have 1 over 100 or 100. If we had 1,000, then we'd have 1,000. And as we get larger and larger and larger x values, we should see that this number is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, closer to 0. So we say that 1 over infinity, which we know infinity is in a number, so we have to be careful with that, but the concept is 1 over a larger and larger and larger number, we're going to get closer and closer and closer to 0. So the limit, so we can't say that this is equal to 0, we'll say it goes to 0. So 1 over x, the limit as x goes to infinity is 0. Now what happens as x goes to negative infinity of 1 over x? Well again, if we have 1 tenth, uh, that'll give us a negative uh, one tenth, then a hundredth. So again, hopefully we see that these numbers again are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, closer to zero. So we say the limit as x goes to negative infinity of one over x is also zero. If we look at example five here, the limit as x goes to infinity of two over x to the third. Well, what's happening here as x gets larger and larger and larger, we're now cubing that larger and larger number. We're taking two and dividing it by that. So if I take two and divide it by a larger and larger and larger number, we're still gonna get zero out. Again, we could plug in numbers if you want. If you don't believe that, or if you don't like that idea, um, go ahead and pause and pull out your calculator and pull it, put in some numbers that are getting larger and larger and larger for x. So maybe plug in 10, plug in 100, plug in 1,000 and see what happens to 2 divided by that number. You'll see that it comes to 0 as well. These are very important concepts as we get into larger um, rational expressions. So here, we're taking the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared plus 5x minus 3 over 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. So here, as x gets larger and larger and larger, x squared is getting larger, the 5x is getting larger, then we're subtracting off 3. Again, if you remember when we first started talking with limits to infinity, this stuff out here really doesn't have a whole lot of bearing on what's happening with x going to infinity. The highest degree is really going to determine what's happening with this function. So if we had x squared minus 5x to say, um, that minus 5x, as x gets very large, x squared is going to grow much quicker than a 5x is going to grow. So when we take the limit as x goes to infinity of a rational expression, we can eliminate the extra terms of this function because these are not going to give us a lot of bearing on what's happening with the function as x is very large. Same thing with our denominator. If we had 2x squared plus 3x minus 1, this linear and constant is not going to have a lot of bearing on this entire function as x gets very large. So as we did on the top, we can eliminate that extra stuff. And we can focus in on that largest exponent or the highest degree of the denominator. So we can think of this as the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared over 2x. And if I simplify x squared over 2x squared, I end up with 1 half. So that gives us our limit as x goes to infinity 
of x squared over 2x equal to 1 half. So the limit up here is going to be 1 half as well. So what does this tell us? This tells us that the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 1 half. In example 7, um, it's going to be very similar. Here we have x squared plus 5x to the 1 half minus 3 over x to the 4th plus 2x minus 1 as x gets larger and larger and larger. Again, this 5x to the 1 half and minus 3 really are not going to have a lot of bearing on our function. Likewise, the 2x minus 1. So we're going to focus in on those leading terms or the highest degree exponent um, terms. So this is the same as the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared over x to the fourth. We can reduce that to 1 over x squared. Again, as x gets larger and larger and larger, we're taking 1 divided by a larger and larger number squared, that's going to go to 0. Again, if you don't like that, you can plug in some numbers for x. What happens is x gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. 1 divided by that gets smaller and smaller and smaller, closer to 0. So we know that the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 0. We have just a few more examples here. Um, example 8 um, looks very cumbersome and very nasty. Uh, we might even change this to a negative infinity. So what happens as x gets um, smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller um, with this function? Again, this extra stuff here, not a whole lot of bearing. As x gets very large, we can cross off this as well. Since we're getting x getting very big, we're only interested in the highest degree numerator denominator term. So this is looking at the limit as x goes to negative infinity of x to the fifth over 3x to the seventh. Simplifying that, we end up with 1 over 3x squared. Again, as x gets larger and larger and larger, x squared goes to infinity. 3 times that is still infinity. 1 divided by a larger and larger, num larger number goes to 0. So we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. I do want to throw in one more example here. Uh, we'll call it example 8a, or maybe 8b there. Um, what happens if we take the limit as x goes to infinity of 3x to the fifth plus 2x squared plus 5 over x to the third plus 2x squared minus 1. So again, we can eliminate the extra stuff, the quadratic term and the constant here, quadratic and constant. Those have no bearing on where the entire function is going as x gets larger. So now we can take the limit as x goes to infinity of 3x to the fifth over x to the third. Simplifying this, we get 3x squared. Now as x gets larger and larger and larger, 3x squared is going to get larger and larger and larger as well. That goes to infinity, which is a does not exist. The reason I wanted to put that in there is it kind of gives us an idea of the three things that can happen. Notice on example 6 here, the exponents or the degree of the numerator and denominator was the same. If they're the same, a rule of thumb that you can use is that you can take the ratio of the coefficients. So there's a 1 in front of the x squared, so 1 divided by 2 gives us the 1 half. In example 7, we saw where the numerator was smaller than the degree of the denominator. If the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, we're going to get a horizontal asymptote of 0. In example 8b here, we see that we had the numerator's degree is higher than the degree of the denominator. If that's the case, we'll always get one of the infinities, and it does not exist. You'll have to plug in um, and can kind of work with, is it a negative infinity or a positive infinity, but a good rule of thumb nonetheless. Just two more examples here, and we'll be done with you. Um, the limit as x goes to infinity of the sine of x over x. Well, how do we find this limit? Because we can't just plug in infinity um, for that. Um, so what happens with the sine of x here? Well, we know the graph of the sine of x is going to start here at 0, come down, go up, and it continues 
forever and ever and ever. So we can label that as the sign f of x equals the sine of x. Well, what happens then if I divide it by x? And again, we're only interested in as x goes to infinity. So what happens if I divide these values by x? What's going to happen is it's going to look like this, and then it's going to get very small to where it's going to look like it's just a straight line, and it's going to follow out to be 0. So we end up with a y equals 0 as our horizontal asymptote. If you want, you can definitely put that into our calculator and view that. Remember, we can always look at a graphical representation. Um, we're going to have the sine of x divided by x. Make sure your mode is in the correct mode. We want to be in radians. If you're not in radians, make sure you are in there. And if we graph that, here comes our graph. And we can see, let's change the windows on that. Since we don't need to be so large, we're negative 1 to 1 on the y's. So here we go. So there you should see that it comes very high and then it's going to go very small and out to nothing. You could change your x values if you want um, to go out as far as you want. The last one here, we're going to find the horizontal asymptotes of 2x plus 3 over the square root of x squared plus 5x. Remember to find a horizontal asymptote. We're looking at the limit as x goes to infinity of the function and the limit as x goes to negative infinity of the function. And we have to test both of them because it could go to one number on the left side, it could go to a completely different number on the right side. Or we could see a positive and a negative, or we could see they come to the same value. So what's happening here with this function? Well, we can think of 2x plus 3. We know, again, this plus 3 has not a lot of bearing as x goes to infinity. Likewise, this plus 5x doesn't have a whole lot of bearing. So this function is looking at 2x over the square root of x squared. The square root of x squared is, hopefully you remember, the, square, the absolute value of x. Likewise, with negative infinity, we can look at this as 2x over oh, the absolute value of x. So what happens as x gets larger and larger and larger here? Well, as x gets larger, 2x gets larger. The absolute value of x gets larger as well. So we're taking 2x and dividing it by the absolute value of x, or 2 infinities divided by an infinity, and it's going to end up being 2. And that's going to give us our horizontal asymptote as we go to positive infinity. Well, if I look at 2x over the absolute value of x as x goes to negative infinity, here I'm taking 2 times the negative infinity divided by the absolute value of a negative infinity, which is then going to be positive infinity. So I'm ending up with a negative divided by a positive, which is going to end up with a negative 2 for our horizontal asymptote. So what does that look like? Well, it would be interesting if you had your calculator to go ahead and type that in. If you don't, I will go ahead and show that here. So we have 2x plus 3 divided by the square root of x squared um, plus 5x. And again, we're looking for the very large and very small numbers, so I'm going to change my windows, and we're going to change our uh, x's to maybe a, a negative 1,000 to 1,000, and my y min and my y max, I'm just going to do a negative 5 to 5. I'm going to graph that, and notice our graph came through here, and up here it went kind of out. Now, there's a lot of things happening here around zero, so don't think this is just jumps out and, and doesn't do anything. It doesn't necessarily work that way. It could, um, but what we're in, really interested in is what's happening way out here on our graph as x goes to negative infinity and x goes to positive infinity. And we should see that this value here is 2, or negative 2, and this value up here is positive 2. So that gives us a better indication and a clearer graphical representation of what's happening at our extreme points and to show that our horizontal asymptotes are at 2 and negative 2. And that's going to conclude our asymptotes or horizontal asymptote lesson. Happy
limiting 